Hi and welcome to um, our class. Um, so glad you could make it. So my name's Beth Barlow. Um, I'm sometimes your tutor and sometimes I'm the sidekick to the guest tutor. So now you've started the video, you won't have to rewind and stop and start. All the breaks are built in and all the times for you to have a little go at each of the activities. So what will happen is the tutor will demo the activity like they would do in a normal class um, and then you can go off and, and give it a little go. Um, at the end of each activity um, there'll be a buzzer and that's just kind of to bring everyone back together. So if you find that you have um, completed the activity um, feel free to have a little chat amongst yourselves um, there's probably going to be comments just below me here so um, use that facility if it's the live class also the tutor will be here so that's an added bonus of kind of uh, lots of online tutorials is that the tutors here so do pick their brains and um, show them the kind of things that you've completed and um, tell them what you're pleased with what you have struggled with and um, sort of and get some tips off them so that's why they're here that's a bonus um, and um, if you find that you are a little bit slower and you like to take your time over things and um, do kind of try and join us and go on to the next activity and um, one of the kind of key things that we're hoping of these classes is that they'll give a feeling of people coming together and actually doing classes together rather than you all sort of sat separately doing your own tutorials so um, yeah do kind of join us on the task and then if you like to spend a little bit more time you can always redo the, the session at a later date so the videos will remain online so you can have another look at those um, or you can just have a little go on your own. So today we'll be doing some knitting we'll be making something similar to this so it could be a ball uh, it could be I've used them for tiny little heads um, so just something you can get your teeth into and I'll be teaching you how to do a slip knot, how to cast on, how to do some knitting and then how to cast off at the end. So I will hand over to my hands. Just before we start I wanted to have a little talk about the kind of wool that you might choose when you're just beginning to knit. So um, choose something light because uh, and light I, by light I mean in colour. So if you choose something too dark it's hard to see the stitches and you just make it so much more challenging for yourself. It can be really tempting to choose some of these nice kind of um, fluffy wools or ones with bits of spangle coming off them. So, but um, it's a bit of a mistake. When I first started to knit, um, I knitted a jumper, which uh, we used to call the mouldy orangutan because it was like this orange wool with green bits in. Some bits were fat and some bits were skinny. Um, and it was really incredibly hard to knit with um, and to see where your stitches were. And... Um, to my early credit and naivety probably, I, I carried on with this wool and I knitted a jumper, but it was really hard work to be starting with. So start, make it easy on yourself. The other thing is choose a wool or a yarn that is um, fairly thick. If you choose something that's too thin, it's going to take you ages to, um, to get any kind of um, uh, size to your knitting and you're just going to get a little bit despondent as well. Um, in terms of your needles, these needles are probably a little bit too thick for this wool but I'll use them today just because it's um, they're easy to see um, and it's nice contrast. Um, but really don't worry at this stage about matching up the right size needles to your right size yarn. Um, if you go for a slightly bigger needle than, than your, your yarn needs, um, that's probably a bit easier because your stitches will be a bit looser. Um, when people start to knit, they invariably um, knit uh, very tight and you think you have to pull everything really tight. So another tip is just remember, um, loose, loose, loose. Very few people knit too loose. Um, I have known a few people who are quite loose knitters. Um, sounds terrible, but they were. Um, so, but um, yeah, just think, you know, keep everything quite loose because if you get too tight, you're going to get stressed. It's going to be hard to get your needles into the stitches and things and it's just going to be um, kind of a, a bit of a nightmare for you. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to do your first stitch. Um, 
Another handy tip is if you know anyone who does knit um, and you're struggling with the casting on, maybe get them to, to cast you on some stitches to start you off. I think that's probably how a lot of people start with a grandma or a mum or someone or a dad or a granddad. Um, to casting on some stitches for them. I'm going to show you how to do it so you know how to do it yourself um, and then there'll be some time to have, have a go. So during these bits where it's just uh, me showing you and um, probably just watch uh, for now and then um, as I get further into I'm going to cast on a few stitches so you might want to um, have a little go yourself. So this is a slip stitch so we've got the um, two parts to the wool. We've got one that's attached to the ball and we've got this one. So we're going to take that one, which is not attached to the ball, and we're going to make a loop like that. I sort of think it looks a bit like a fish. Uh, and we're going to take this, this ball and we're going to put another loop in there. OK, so we've got two loops, sort of. And we're going to grab both tails, so this tail and the tail that's attached to the wool. And we're going to take our fingers and we're going to grab this loop, second loop we've made, and we're going to pull it through. And you can see you've got a knot here, here, and you've got um, two tails. And if you pull those, the knot will get smaller. If you pulled it completely, the knot would disappear. So uh, it's just a nice, flexible loop um, and a good way to start. So I'll do it again. So the tail goes over this bit, which is attached to your wool goes up into the middle, you get your pincers and you grab this and you grab your two tails and you pull and you've got your knot there and you've got and you can take that knot now and you can put it onto your needle. If you are really struggling just any old knot will do for now. Um, like I say this one allows you to keep it kind of loose and to vary the the size of the knots and it's the same knot you'd use if you were crocheting as well. So now effectively you've got your first stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do casting on um, and then uh, there'll be some time for you to have a little go yourself. So um, what we do is basically, um, there's lots of different ways of casting on, I'm going to show you a way that is basically uh, the knitting stitch that you'll use later on um, but as a way of casting on. So we use two needles so I'm right handed so I hold uh, the one that's already got the stitches in my left hand and this one with no stitches on yet. Uh, so the doing one I suppose in the right hand, um, in my right hand. Um, and we're going to put the needles, the right hand needle through and it's going to go into that stitch. So that's the stitch there. You don't want to go here because obviously that's no stitch and you don't want to go into that knot because that's your knot. So you're going in, you see that little, there's a little loop there, I'll bring it up a bit so you can see it a bit more. And we're going to go into there and we're going to do sort of a skull and crossbones kind of motif, so the crossed like that. The other thing to remember is to make sure that you are knitting, you know, schoolboy error but happens quite a lot, uh, knitting with your ball of wool because if you start to knit with that you're going to have some very short knitting. So um, if that's too long you might want to cut it if it's confusing you because sometimes it does but throw it over there for now. Mm. Out the way. Um, so we're going to go with this this bit attached to your wool. We're going to go, um, we'll, we'll pretend this is a rabbit just so it helps you remember. So the rabbit is going to go round the back of the tree, in between the tree and down. And then what we're going to do is something a bit curious which will take a little bit of practice because we're going to pull this needle and if you pull the needle right out you'd just be back to square one. So we'll put that back in again go round. So you're going to pull the needle and you'll see um, on your needles you've got a little stitch appearing here. So instead of coming straight out we're going to go back round and into there. Okay that's the bit that just you just have to practice and eventually you'll kind of get it. And then if we were knitting we'd cast off that stitch but because we're casting on we're going to put that stitch on there and then by some wonderful miracle we have two stitches. So I'm going to carry on and do those. I'm going to talk through it a couple of times and then I'm going to um, stay quiet so you can watch. Um, so we go, the rabbit goes round the back of the tree, between the trees and down. And then we pull this needle and just as we're about to pull it out, we go up and into that stitch. And then that stitch goes from this needle onto there. So the rabbit goes round the tree, down 
and we pull out and just as we're about to go out we go up and there so we go the rabbit goes around the tree comes down we start to pull out and then just as we're about to do we get that stitch there and we go in there So I'm going to uh, going to have um, 10 minutes now for you to go away and to cast on some stitches. Um, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11. But if you just cast on as many as you want until you've got the, uh, the hang of it. Um, and uh, then we'll meet back in 10 minutes. Um, I'm still here if you're really struggling. Uh, like I say, don't get um, sort of despondent of yourself. It's really it's a, it's a skill, and it's it's tricky to learn this first bit. But once you've learned it, it's the skill for life. So it's worth persevering with. Um, if you're uh, knitting together with other people and you get it, please sort of help them to to get it too, because really sort of knitting is one of those skills that would have been taught. Um, you know from generation to generation people sat next to each other sort of learning it and that's really you know the best way to learn um, but this is sort of second best so um, I am here if you have any questions uh, so give it a go <laughs> Chin 
Welcome back. Um, I hope you had enjoyed, had some fun casting on. Uh, for anyone who's a fan of continuity, I'm a bit of a continuity thing in, in films and things. I have cut my nails, so apologies for those. They were ghastly before. Um, so you have cast on some stitches. Hopefully you've uh, cast on quite a few. I've got 11 here. Um, and we're going to uh, knit with 10 stitches because I want us to just to make um, a very small square just so that it's uh, doable within the time that we've got. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 11. So if you've got more than you need, a bit soul destroying this, but just slip them off the edge and that will get rid of your, your stitches that you don't need for this. Um, and then you have basically learned how to do a knit stitch uh, from your casting on. So we're just going to um, put the needle back in, so and to the back and in the skull and crossbone kind of shape. And then we're going to bring the rabbit around the back of the tree, through the middle of the tree and down. We're going to bring that one down and we're going to end up, as we did before, with one stitch, well, all these stitches on this needle and this stitch on here. And instead of casting it over onto there and making more stitches, we're going to take this first stitch, which is here, and we're going to slip it off the end of the needle. Give it a little pull, but not too, too much, because remember, you need to be knitting as loosely as possible, otherwise it will get really tricky for you to knit. So I'll do that again. So we go through, round, round through the middle, down and out, and then we slip that stitch off again. So we're basically transferring all these stitches that are on here onto this needle. So now we've got two stitches on there. So through the middle, round, through the middle of the trees, down, grab that stitch there, and then off. So round, down, through, and off. 
And you can see you've got a little uh, start of some knitting going here. So you do that all the way to the end. I'll do it fairly slowly so you can see kind of what's happening. So we go down and round. So once you get better at this, you won't even have to look at your knitting. That's so you see like um, you know your grandma watching the telly whilst doing some knitting, and it seems just amazing. But it becomes so intuitive. But at this stage, you probably find it a little bit frustrating. You might end up uh, knitting into the wrong bit. Uh, you might end up with holes in your work. Um, when I first started to knit, um, my son was quite young and he had lots of teddy bears. So I used to knit uh, just squares. And um, then I used to say to him when there was a square that had lots of holes in it and was really quite rubbish, I said, oh, here's another blanket for your bears, George. So, uh, so he had lots and lots of uh, blankets for bears with holes in. Um, but really, that's kind of part of learning. So... So what you have done, sorry I'll switch that over, is you've transferred all your stitches which were on here onto this needle here now. Um, so you need to swap over hands and you're going to do exactly the same again. So you're going to take all the stitches um, that you've created there and you're going to transfer them back a little bit quicker. So this is the, um, I think it's the European way of knitting. There is another way of knitting, which to me, uh, I have done it, but you have to hold your wool and the tension needs to be good in your wool. So this bit here, um, and it's it's a little bit quicker. It's quite a lot quicker, but I find it a bit more difficult to concentrate on. So um, just a little note on holding your wool as well. So um, I tend to uh, put it over my hand like that and then sort of wrap it around some fingers and have a finger out like that that you wrap it around but you will find your own way but this is what people talk about when they talk about oh the tension's all wrong on my knitting so you can in theory but no one really does because they all have their own you all have your own tension so you can uh, in theory change how much you pull on this and that will make uh, your tension tighter or how loose you you let it go um, and your stitches will be tighter on the on the thing so but really I think it's kind of whatever tension you develop as a knitter you're kind of stuck with that tension and as I say some people uh, do knit very loosely once they, they come to be uh, an accomplished knitter and some people take uh, knit quite tight um, so we're doing that and we're just doing that over and over and over again until we reach the desired size for our piece and as we've only got just a few stitches on there it's not going to take us long before we can start to see the knitting coming out here so this is um, called a garter stitch and it's basically the bumpy kind of stitch that you get uh, the other stitch you get is stocking stitch and that uh, requires the knit stitch that we've just learnt now and also another stitch which I'm not going to teach you today I think uh, taking this in is enough anyway so this is enough for you to create um, something that is um, you know a reasonably a little size but in garter stitch so you can see then that I almost made a mistake so uh, one of the common mistakes is that you might go into the knitting here so instead of going into what you need to go into is this, the bit right close to the needle. So let me just make check that you can see that. So we could go in there and that would be incorrect. But we actually need to go in that bit that's um, round the needle. So that's another thing that you might do when you uh, start off. And it'll just make your knitting a bit bumpy and uneven. Um, it won't be the end of the world. You might end up with a few more stitches on your needle. Um, than you intended so a useful thing might be as well to see if you're going down the light the right tracks is to count your stitches every now and again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten see that you haven't acquired any uh, which you might have done by knitting into the knitting not the stitch or um, you haven't dropped any which I'll kind of you might have dropped one by just going like that and not knitting it um, or dropping it off the needle maybe before it's ready it's been 
completed the stitch um, so yeah holes are pretty much inevitable I mean to be honest I can't really uh, tell you how I created some of the holes in my knitting before um, I find it quite difficult to work out how to make a hole nowadays uh, deliberately but there was there were definitely very holy kind of pieces before so um, I'm going to give you some time to have a little go so I think we've probably uh, we've probably got about 20 minutes uh, to just keep going backwards and forwards and creating these are so every time you do that you transfer it from one needle to the next that's classed as a row so if you were looking at a pattern and it said do 10 rows it would be 10 times of that backwards and forwards which when you start off seems like impossible you mean I've got to do 10 times 10 stitches you know because uh, because you will be knitting slowly to start off with uh, but eventually it kind of comes and it's a bit easier and as I say if we're if we're knitting with kind of slightly bigger wool it will will come together uh, a lot quicker so um, what we're going to hope to achieve by the end of 20 minutes is to have done probably about one, two, three. Um, well, we'll say ten rows, um, and then we'll teach you how to cast off, um, and I'll show you how to make this into something that uh, vaguely looks like something useful, even though it's quite small. All right. I've known some Before I first met you I was lonesome But then you came inside Dear, my heart grew light And this old world seemed new to me You're really swell I have to admit you Deserve expressions that really fit you and so I've racked my brain hoping to explain All the things that you do to me By mere fist to shame Let me explain By mere fist to shame means that you're grand By mere fist to shame Again I'll explain It means you're the fairest in the land I could say Bella, Bella Even Zelvendapa Each language only helps me tell you How grand you are And I've tried to explain By mere Mr. Shane So kiss me and say you'll understand Mr. Shane, you've heard it all before, but let me try to explain. By mere Mr. Shane means that you're grand. By mere Mr. Shane, such an old friend, and yet I should explain. It means I am begging for your hand. I could say, Bella, Bella, even Zevundaba, each language only helps me. I've tried to explain by mere Mr. Shane So kiss me and say you'll understand could say Bella, Bella, even Zevundaba Each language only helps me tell you how grand you are And I've tried to explain by mere Mr. Shane So kiss 
me and say you'll understand Just kiss me and say you'll understand Conta la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta Conta la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta, la gusta We gotta get going, where are we going, what are we gonna do? We're on our way to somewhere, the three of us and you. What we see there, who will be there, will be the big surprise. There may be caballeros with dark and flashing eyes. We're on our way, pack up your pack. And if we stay, we won't come back. How can we go? We don't have a dime, but we're going and we're gonna have a happy time. Now someone said he'd just come back from somewhere A friend of mine that I don't even know He told me that it's very close to nowhere If that's the case, that's the place The place we all should go We gotta get going, where are we going, what are we gonna do We're on our way to somewhere Three of us and you What will we see there? Who will be there? What will be the big surprise? There may be caballeros With dark and flashing eyes I'll take a train You take a train You take a boat I'll take a boat You take a plane I'll take a plane You ride a goat You ride the goat Oh, we don't care We'll either walk or climb But we'll get there And we're gonna have a happy time Now someone said he'd just come back from somewhere And picked a few petunias in the snow He told me that it's very close to nowhere If that's the case, that's the place The place we all should go Somebody who's on his way to me Gonna go your way, I'll go my way Wanna make a little bet? We'll all meet in the country They haven't found us yet We're on our way, We're on our way. Pack, up pack. pack up your pack And if we stay, if we, stay. We, won't we won't come back How can we go? We don't have a dime But we're going and we're gonna have a happy Happy, 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 happy Quanta la gusta, la gusta, la gusta Gonna have a happy time
welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your knitting. Um, we should have all been well. But as I say, there might be some holes and knobbly bits, but don't worry about them too much at this stage. So we should have something that looks a bit like this. So uh, it's only a little bit of knitting, but I'm going to show you how to cast off and then I'm going to show you how to make this into um, a kind of ball shape. Um, so there's um, a lady whose name completely slips my mind for now, but she does a range of books where she makes like little dolls and figures and things out of small little bits like this so um what you make could be the head of a doll or it could be a ball for the cat or whatever so at least it, it makes us feel like we've made something um, and then you can use all the skills that you've got to make something more ambitious or bigger or uh, just make more balls for the cat um so casting off um so everything is is fairly sim similar to what we've done before so you're doing your your x and then you're doing your rabbit coming round and bringing it round and putting one stitch onto there and then you're doing the same so you're doing your x you're going round and through and round and you've got two stitches onto here and this is how you cast off so you've got one two stitch and what you do is you take the end of this needle in your left hand side and you put it underneath or you can just do it with your fingers if you find it easier so but you can put your needle underneath there and you're going to lift that stitch so it's over the top of that one so that one that first one is staying on and that's going over the top and then you put one stitch on there so i'll show you again so um so we've got two stitches it goes in like that and then it goes over like that and off. So round and create a stitch. So put this needle in and I'll come really close so you can see, hopefully a bit blurry there. So I'll try there. And so you can see it's lifting over the top of that stitch and on there. So I'll do another one and I'll show you with my fingers. So, so you can always, if you're finding it difficult with the thing, you can pick that up and just bring it over the top of there. So once you get well versed, it'd be kind of quicker to do it with your, your needle. But when you start off, sometimes it's just easier to pick it up and put it over like that. So, and you can see what's happening is your knitting here is coming off the needle and it's got a nice edge on it. So uh, do that right to the end. So I'll do another slower one. So you're doing a normal stitch, put it on there, you've got two stitches on there, you're bringing that up and over the top. So as I say, people tend to forget to learn how to cast off and then they end up kind of knitting and knitting and never being able to stop. Um, so like a weird knitting version of the Red Shoes if you've ever seen that film. So the last stitch is going over the top and then you're left with all your knitting has come off and you've just got that one stitch. Cut a tail, we'll cut a fairly long tail because we're going to use this the stitch. So so cut the tail off and then obviously you've got your ball of ball of wool to do with what you please. Um further projects. And then all we do is we take that bit of string and we put it through this loop like that. I'll do that again just in case. That was a kind of funny angle. So you put your string through this loop. And then you take off your needle and it's all knotted. If you didn't put it through the loop when it came off the needle, you just it would just run and run and, and then you'd end up just with a ball of wool again. So um, what I'm going to show you just for this last bit, and then you probably try this um, uh, at your leisure really. Um, I think that'll probably be it for me tutoring you for today. So we're going to use um, a big eyed needle. So these are specifically, um, I think they're called knitting needles but that's confusing when you go into a knitting shop and you ask for knitting needles. So uh, maybe they're called knitting sewing needles. I've never quite worked out what they're called. So we're going to put the end of the wool hopefully through there. Have we got it all through? More or less, that'll do. 
and we're going to gather this end up so we're just going to do loads of stitches to stitch each end together and rook it all up so um, for anyone who's new to sti stitching um, we're just doing well we're just going through we're kind of doing a running stitch but it's not probably as organized as that really so we're thinking this will be inside so we don't need to worry too much about it being beautiful and we're gonna go and do a running stitch along this bit too so we're sewing those two bits together So you can see how, at this stage, it's kind of like a, a tiny hat for an acorn, uh, or or a re really ineffective thimble, perhaps. So, and we're just going to finish that off there by putting another stitch through. And as you finish off with stitching, you put the same as you did with the knitting. You put that through the loop, pull it. And then so we've got our hat and we can turn it inside out and if you've got some stuffing or I don't know, a bit of old tissue or anything can go in there but for now we'll just use kind of the wool we've got I think for now um, I'm going to take this bit which was your starting thread so you'd put a bit more stuffing in it probably than I've put in um, but just to show you the principle we do the same as we did on the other end and just look it all up so yeah you can see how you can start to make uh, little figures if you wanted to make I used to make um, I made these things called knitted uh, knitted protesters so I made little heads for them so there's a little head if you wanted to make a little body you'd make a longer thinner bit and then arms and everything's made in exactly the same way really it's just different sizes of knitting um, and we'll just finish that off by doing a stitch through the loop like that and there we have a tiny head and obviously if I add a bit more stuff in I need have a bit more um, substance to him so um, and then just you can either just chop that off if you're not going to need it but if you were going to make a head and then you're going to sew it onto the body it'd be worth leaving that on so that you can sew it on so um, yeah they could be I don't know what else could they be flowers you could do flowers you know the world is really a oyster really uh, so you've made a nice bit of 3d knitting today so I hope you enjoyed the class um, and um, I will, strangely enough, hand over to myself just for a little bit of extra info. And just to say thank you to you for coming along and hope that you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it and you'd like to support us to make more content, then please do consider becoming a Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com and type in Beth Barley, you should find us there. Um, the money helps us to continue to make uh, videos like this that everyone can um, enjoy them for free um, and it also helps us to pay artists um, so we're passionate that once this crisis is, is gone that hopefully there still will be a creative economy and we can still be there to serve everyone. Um, if you are on Facebook then feel free to follow me Beth Barlow on Facebook um, and I can pass on any comments to tutors and things um, and I think that probably is about it apart from to just tell you that um, the films uh, stay online so if you've enjoyed it and you'd like to give it another go or you know someone else who you think might benefit from it then please do feel free to come back to the site and have a look <laughs>
times is enough to realize you're stronger than all of your doubts and for me live your days like every second